Hello, chemistry students. Today we're going to be performing our introducing mass and volume measurements experiment. So in this lab, we're going to practice techniques for weighing objects and measuring the volume of water. We will also determine the number of drops in one milliliter of water. Let's get started. So for part one of this experiment, we're going to be weighing and determining the mass of two objects. Our first object will be this wooden block labeled number two. And our second object will be this copper cube labeled number 19. So the first balance we're going to be using is an analytical balance. And this is our analytical balance. So this is the first balance that we'll be using to determine the mass of our two objects. So we're first going to determine the mass of object number one, which is our wooden block. And its code is number two. So the first thing we have to do is we're never going to place the object that we're going to weigh directly on the balance. So we're going to get a piece of weigh paper and set it on our balance. And now you will see that the weigh paper has mass. So we need to tear or zero the balance. And that will subtract the mass of the weigh paper. So now we're going to add our wooden block to the balance and determine the mass of just the wooden block. The mass of the wooden block, object number one, is 25.7453 grams. So now we're going to determine the mass of object number two, which is our copper cube. using the analytical balance. And so we've already placed our weigh paper on the balance and we've teared the balance. So now we will add the copper cube. The mass of object number two, the copper cube, is 145.8226 grams. The next balance we'll be using to determine the mass of our two objects is called a triple beam balance. And this is a triple beam balance. We first need to determine the mass of a weigh boat. So this is our weigh boat. We'll place it on the triple beam balance. And then we will adjust these until our triple beam balance is at the zero marker. Okay, so you can see how we've lined up our marks here at the zero. So we are balanced with the weigh boat. So now we need to read the scale to determine what the mass of our weigh boat is. So the mass of our weigh boat on the triple beam balance appears to be about 3.37 grams. 
we will now add object number one, which is our wooden block to the way boat. And we will have to readjust our balance. Okay, so we have our way boat and the wooden block on the triple beam balance. You can see that we've lined up our lines here, so we know that the scale is balanced. The mass of the way boat plus object number one, the wooden block, is going to be the combination of 20 grams on this back scale and 9.26 grams. So the total mass of the wooden block plus the weigh boat is 29.26 grams. You now need to determine the mass of object number one, the wooden block, by subtracting the mass of the way boat from the mass of the wooden block plus the way boat. We will now determine the mass of object number two, the copper cube, with the triple beam balance. So we've already determined the mass of our way boat with the triple beam balance from the previous object. So we use the same mass for the way boat because we're using the same way boat. And we have our copper cube here, object number two, code 19. We'll place it in the way boat. And now we need to determine the mass of the copper cube plus the way boat using the triple beam balance. So we've aligned our lines on the triple beam balance, so we know that we are balanced. So the mass of our copper cube plus the way boat is going to be 140, 9.6, about two grams. So 149.62 grams is the mass of our copper cube plus the weigh boat. Now you need to subtract the mass of our weigh boat from the mass of the copper cube plus the weigh boat in order to determine the mass of object number two, which is our copper cube. So the third balance we'll be using to determine the mass of our two objects is called a desktop balance or a top loading balance. And this is our desktop balance. So the first thing we need to do is take a piece of weigh paper and set it on the balance. Now our weigh paper has mass and you can see that on the balance. And now we will tear the balance. So that subtracts the mass of our weigh paper. We will now add object number one, which is our wooden block to 
the balance. The mass of our wooden block, object number one, using the desktop balance is 25.74 grams. We next need to determine the mass of object number two, the copper cube, on the desktop balance. The mass of our copper cube on the desktop balance is 145.80 grams. This concludes part one of this experiment. For part two of this experiment, we're going to be measuring the volume of a test tube. So we have our test tube here, and this is our 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. So we first need to fill our graduated cylinder to the top calibrated mark. We will take deionized water. Now remember that when we read the volume of a liquid, we're reading the bottom of the meniscus. This is the volume of water in our 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. Next, we're going to transfer water from our graduated cylinder to fill our test tube. We're going to be using a disposable barrel pipette. So we filled our test tube with water from the graduated cylinder. We're now going to read the remaining water in the graduated cylinder to determine the amount of water that's in our test tube. This is the remaining volume of water in our graduated cylinder. You can now determine the volume of water in the test tube. This concludes part two of this experiment. In part three of this experiment, we're going to determine the number of drops in one milliliter of water. So you first need to fill your graduated cylinder so the bottom of the meniscus is at the top calibrated mark. I've already gone ahead and done this. This is the initial volume in our 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. We're next going to transfer about five milliliters of water from our graduated cylinder to a clean and dry test tube using one of our disposable barrel pipettes. We'll now record the final volume in our graduated cylinder. This is the final volume in our graduated cylinder after transferring approximately five milliliters to our test tube. We're next going to use a Sharpie 
to mark the height of water in the test tube. You can see I've marked the height of the water in the test tube. So after marking the height of the water in the test tube, I poured the water out and this is the height of the water in the test tube from the bottom of the test tube to the mark that was marked with the Sharpie. We're now going to use a barrel pipette to transfer water drop wise into the test tube to fill the mark. And we're gonna count the number of drops till we fill this test tube to the mark with water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 51, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119. All right, so at 119 drops, it's looking like the bottom of the meniscus of the water is at our line. So it took 119 drops of water to fill our test tube to our mark. You should now be able to calculate the number of drops in one milliliter of water. This concludes part three of this experiment. That concludes our introducing mass and volume measurements laboratory. Thank you for joining me for this experiment.